Yeah, as we know that uh, ecosystem goods are uh, priced uh, in market and bought and sold throughout the human history, but ecosystem services uh, has uh, uh, little attention in market and not uh, not bought and sold uh, due to difficult in quantifying and valuing ecosystem services. Uh, at C4, we often talk about landscape approach uh, as a as a solution, win-win solution to provide the production of uh, goods and ecosystem services at, at landscape scale. Um, however, most of the land use plan rarely involve uh, or account ecosystem services due to difficulty in quantify and mapping. And this morning, I am going to talk about economic evaluation of ecosystem goods and services under different landscape management scenarios. Uh, this study assessed uh, five important ecosystem goods and services uh, under five uh, future landscapes scenarios in southeastern Australia. The landscape uh, uh, chosen was uh, highly fragmented and modified uh, uh, due to clearance of native vegetation in past uh, 200 years or so. And the landscape undergone various changes uh, uh, from investment, uh, uh, reconfiguration, and uh, land abandonment, and now reinvestment of landscape for multiple ecosystem goods and services. Recently, there is a lot of uh, initiatives uh, uh, ongoing about uh, landscape uh, reinvestment for sustainable farming and carbon farming initiative. So this is uh, an interesting opportunity uh, to see how the recent investment uh, um, uh, works on environmental and economic outcomes. So this uh, talk uh, will cover three components. Uh, uh, first uh, is uh, identification and definition of uh, future landscape management scenarios in the study area. Uh, secondly, uh, identification and quantification and also economic value, valuation of uh, important ecosystem um, uh, goods and services. And finally, we talk about, uh, I talk about uh, trade-off among ecosystem uh, services. So let me start with uh, how did we identify and define future land use scenarios and what they are. Uh, we discussed with uh, various uh, uh, stakeholders and also reviewed the recent past land use, uh, uh, land cover change in study area to identify what can happen in, in future. So first, uh, we came with a business as usual scenario, uh, which uh, assumes uh, the current uh, farming and management practices will continue for uh, foreseeable future without uh, significant changes. So which is a kind of uh, uh, a likelihood scenario. And the second scenario is uh, uh, eco, um, uh, agrocentric scenario. We identified uh, due to increasing demand of food production in Australia and also globally. Uh, the landscape will be converted uh, for agricultural production. So there will be substantial increase in agricultural production, uh, this scenario assumes. Uh, the third scenario was an uh, uh, ecocentric scenario due to increasing demands in environmental products and services such as uh, uh, carbon sequestration, biodiversity value. Uh, there is an increasing uh, focus on, uh, on environmental planting and also production forestry in the study area. So that's what uh, the scenario assumes. The fourth scenario is mosaic farming system, which is a kind of uh, uh, landscape approach we talk uh, here at C4. So mix of farming, uh, plantation, and also conservation within the landscape. So this scenario. Uh, the final scenario was a bit pessimistic scenario, land abandonment scenario, uh, because of uh, uh, depopulation in rural areas and and increasing um, uncertainty uh, due to availability of water and, uh, and changing climate. Uh, so the, there will be reduce, reduction in food production and, and local people will, will sell their uh, uh, property and uh, the land will be abandoned, uh, which is pretty pessimistic scenario anyway. So we looked at these all uh, scenarios uh, and uh, quantified uh, five important ecosystem goods and services, such as uh, uh, carbon sequestration, timber production, uh, water, uh, biodiversity, and, uh, and agricultural production. 
uh, we quantified uh, all uh, um, uh, ecosystem services in biophysical units such as uh, a megaliter of water, cubic meter of timber like that and, and converted into dollar value uh, using various valuation methods. So carbon, in case of carbon, we used a uh, reforestation modeling tool uh, that's available from Australian Greenhouse uh, Gas Office which provides us a carbon sequestration uh, per hectare per year and then that's converted to uh, CO2 equivalent and then we used uh, various pricing uh, using uh, uh, Australian government's carbon pricing mechanism to, to calculate the total economic value of carbon. Uh, similarly, in case of timber, we used a tree stand growth model called 3PG, uh, which pulls uh, environmental and, uh, and soil data uh, from, uh, from uh, spatial uh, uh, database. Uh, and then um, in, it produces a uh, um, uh, mean annual in increment uh, per hectare per year, so that we can estimate what's the timber production uh, per hectare. And that, uh, uh, quantity will be used to identify the economic value of uh, timber production uh, using various uh, pricing um, at current uh, scale. Uh, similarly, water was used, uh, uh, water uh, was estimated using uh, water yield by various uh, land use and land cover, uh, and then uh, in, in megaliter, and then used uh, current uh, water price in Australia. There is a well known water price, so it, it was uh, easy. In case of biodiversity, uh, it was a bit challenging uh, because of um, uh, what is the true uh, value of biodiversity. So we left uh, two alternatives, either using uh, uh, ongoing um, um, pricing, biodiversity pricing uh, used by Australian market-based instruments. Uh, another option was use, uh, um, use uh, um, a value transfer method, so biodiversity valued somewhere else transfer to uh, this landscape. So we didn't find the comparable value uh, to transfer from somewhere else. That's why we decided to use uh, uh, the biodiversity value used by Victorian bush tender uh, mechanism that uh, gives, uh, um, gives a biodiversity. If uh, the landowner protects their uh, land for conservation purpose, they, they are paid by the state government. So that's the biodiversity value we used. In case of agriculture production, it was relatively straightforward. So actual uh, uh, agriculture uh, production yield uh, uh, and associated pricing was estimated, uh, was used to estimate the uh, returns from agriculture. So these five uh, ecosystem goods and services uh, were, uh, were com combined each other uh, under different uh, landscape uh, management scenario as I discussed before, uh, five important scenarios. So when we looked, uh, these, uh, these uh, ecosystem services under these scenarios, the interesting trade-off uh, we can see. Uh, for example, um, in case of business as usual scenario, the most of the ecosystem services such as carbon, water, biodiversity are declining, uh, while agriculture production remains more or less same state and timber production is also more or less same. Uh, however, uh, uh, mosaic farming system produce uh, significant uh, outcomes on in terms of ecosystem services. Uh, for example, carbon, agriculture production, uh, biodiversity, and timber are enhanced, uh, while uh, water is more or less same state. Uh, in case of uh, ecocentric, which is environmental planting scenario I discussed uh, before, uh, uh, the carbon is increased. Uh, agriculture production is declined, and but other biodiversity and timber production are enhanced. So this is also somehow um, uh, environmental friendly scenario. Uh, in case of agricultural uh, production, uh, agriculture production in increase and rest of the um, ecosystem services are, are, are declining, and land abandonment scenario produce all negative outcomes uh, uh, except water, we don't know what happens in the future. Uh, this is uh, in terms of ecosystem services, but when we look at uh, uh, dollar value, uh, it's, uh, it's a different result uh, we received um, because uh, uh, agrocentric scenario produced uh, uh, most, uh, most uh, dollar, like so more profitable in terms of economic value uh, because um, uh, it pr at, uh, at higher uh, discount rate, uh, it produced uh, more profit. 
Uh, but if we reduce uh, the discount rate from uh, higher discount rate, uh, say 10% to 5% public discount rate, and the economic value uh, of, uh, of total economic value of mosaic farming system is higher than business as usual and ecocentric scenario. So it's really the matter of um, what uh, return the landowner or investor want. So if you, we, we want, uh, if the investor wants a higher rate of return, uh, then uh, agricultural or business as usual scenario produce a better outcome. But uh, if uh, there is some public money invested, uh, for example, uh, support from government or uh, non-profit organization, in that case, uh, uh, mixed outcome or ecocentric scenario gives a better re better result, and we also found that uh, certain ecosystem services identify and value is uh, mm, relatively straightforward. For example, uh, uh, it's it's uh, obvious anyway. Um, for example, uh, timber production or uh, uh, agriculture production is relatively easy to uh, quantify and value, while biodiversity and other uh, water was a bit challenging. So th this provides an uh, important uh, understanding about how uh, the ecosystem service valuation uh, can be can be different and can provide uh, land uh, land land use planner and manager uh, to to make their uh, decision about land allocation of land uses. Thank you. Thank you very much, Imla. Thank you, Him. <coughs> Thank you, Himal. Um, before we uh, open for questions, can we just can I just ask uh, where we can go look at this article that uh, that you just published? Yeah, it was published in Land Use Policy, and it's available online. Okay. Thank you. So um, uh, now we'd like to uh, uh, ask if uh, the audience would like to ask questions or or make any observations about the the topic. So please. Um, Raise your hand, and then when you ask a question, if you don't mind uh, standing up so that uh, you can be seen and, and saying who you are, that would be that would be best. Any questions? Yeah. Thanks, Lou Versho. Um, Himal, I'm just curious, uh, maybe and maybe I missed it, but what sort of climate variability did you in integrate into this to, to understand? Yeah, I mean, you get rainy years, you get dry years, you get hot years, you get, get cooler years, and these, of course, affect the year-to-year the, the -year provision of, of these ecosystem services. How, how did you in integrate some of this variability into the, this type of analysis, or was it a, real, a static analysis? Yeah, thanks, uh, Lou. That's a, that's a really interesting question. Um, actually, um, uh, this all, uh, uh, I should be t uh, telling that uh, this is a uh, future uh, landscape is for 30 year, we, we assumed a 30 year time horizon for project. And, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, assuming this climate uh, data is used for la past uh, 150 years or so. This is uh, assuming the past uh, climate data. Uh, we assume that similar, uh, similar trend uh, will happen in future. So we, we didn't uh, uh, predict the Mm, the future climate uh, scenario or climate variability. So, did it, you have stochasticity in, in your, in other words, the, the, the current climate variability, was that factored into the analysis, or did you use an average climate over the whole? Uh, we used the average, average climate over, over the past, uh, okay. past 150 years or so. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Christine? Thank you, and thank you for is this working? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, thanks for the, the very interesting talk. I was just wondering if you did this in Australia and you used various various uh, values, for instance, if government payments and all for, for biodiversity. If you were doing this, say, in Nepal, um, how much more difficult or easier or whatever would it be to do this kind of analysis? Thanks, Christian. That's a, that's a very valuable point. Yeah, that's true. It's, a, it's very, it's, it's a, so actually I, I worked uh, this kind of, uh, this kind of scenario of what will be, what happens, uh, uh, that availability of data, resource, and time. So depending on these, uh, these three factors, so we can start with uh, assessing the ecosystem services, uh, uh, qualitative, quantitative, and monetary valuation. 
So if, uh, if we try to do similar assessment in Nepal, it, is, uh, it will be really difficult uh, because uh, of availability of uh, spatial data of all land use, uh, land parcel, uh, and also uh, value of, uh, also calculation of uh, the carbon and, and also biodiversity value. There is no, no readily available uh, valuation tools. Uh, but uh, having said that, uh, there is uh, still uh, some other uh, approaches. We can use uh, more uh, participatory uh, mapping and valuation of participatory assessment and, and valuation of ecosystem services. How local people put the value of uh, each ecosystem service. We, we just done this analysis in Nepal and the paper recently published in Journal of Ecosystem Services. So that's uh, that's uh, entitled uh, assessment of ecosystem services in data poor region. So 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 that uh, that's possi possible. So either we can use uh, people's uh, uh, perception or experts' perception, and we we can we can come with some some result. Anina Weir from Livelihood. Uh, yeah, uh, you mentioned about calculating the biodiversity value. It's based on the rate paid by the state government. Can you elaborate more? Uh, what are the assumptions and how, how that was calculated? And about the discount rate, are you using the financial discount rate or economic discount rate? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, for biodiversity, uh, we used uh, uh, Victorian uh, uh, government's uh, market-based instrument called bush tender. So bush tender is uh, is an approach that if a, a land owner uh, protects uh, uh, native vegetation or um, conserved native vegetation on their private land, they are paid a certain amount from the state government. So which is a, a kind of auction-based uh, payment mechanism because the state is buyer and there are many sellers, uh, land owner are seller. So they they propose, land, land owner propose that, okay, I'm going to protect the uh, native vegetation in certain area, this, this area, and these are the measure. And they put the tender, okay, the, he asked uh, X amount, and the state government uh, proposed Y amount, and they, they negotiate each other. So this value, uh, we got a historical value of uh, last uh, 10 years or so, and we used uh, this historical value is available publicly, so as, as an average value of, uh, of uh, bush tender uh, uh, payments as a, as a biodiversity. And regarding uh, uh, discount rate, I used uh, uh, a commercial discount rate of 10%, uh, public discount rate of 5%, which is uh, common in Australia, and 1% of social discount rate. We looked three discount rates uh, to, to estimate the value. I think um, Dede Rohadi had a question, but I'm going to ask a quick one first, and that's just, can you just, can you say very um, briefly why it's important to um, attach economic values to ecosystem services? Aren't, isn't it obvious that we need them, that the, the atmosphere, that, that we need to sequester carbon, that people need water for their houses, for agri agriculture, et cetera? Doesn't that have enough value in itself? Yeah, thanks, Luis. This is an ongoing debate about uh, two important schools of thoughts, uh, whether we should value the nature or we just uh, say this is invaluable and we can't value this. So if you, if you don't uh, value, if you don't uh, measure, I would say if you can't measure, you can't manage, uh, one, one important. And if you put the value, then it gives you uh, some kind of uh, uh, choice management choice and why we protecting the nature to to policy maker and decision makers so because they have to spend the public money and they need some justification why uh, they are investing this so <coughs> so that's uh, that's uh, important okay thank you um. uh, thank you very much it is uh, very interesting uh, I think it's reflect the trade-off between the development and conservation objective. And you uh, stated that uh, among the five scenarios, the mosaic has looks uh, the, the best uh, value. Uh, my question is how big is the difference between the benefits? I'm thinking about uh, if you want, for example, if you want to promote the more biodiversity, for example, uh, how much uh, the cost that should be compensated to, to, to achieve the, the uh, let's say, the uh, considerable benefits. Yeah, thank 
Yep. Uh, thank you. That's an uh, important question. Uh, we got an actual, um, actual value, all, uh, all scenario, under each scenario, what is the value of uh, carbon, biodiversity, water, and timber, and agriculture uh, on the paper. On top of my head, uh, I think uh, there is some additional payments uh, uh, required, at least some, some payments required. Uh, for example, to com there are two kinds of agriculture production uh, that are uh, being converted to environmental planting or carbon sequestration. So if we say uh, irrigated farming, so the land with irrigation system is uh, is somewhere uh, seventy dollar per system. The carbon price has to be a more than seventy dollar a ton or so, uh, very rough price. But to compete with the dry land uh, farming, it has to be around uh, uh, fifty dollar uh, or so. So that then it, it can compete. But existing carbon price uh, during the time of study was twenty three dollar. That's a, that's a carbon pricing mechanism set by Australian government. But this uh, mechanism is no longer exist at the moment. And um, now there is a different carbon pricing mechanism uh, called direct, uh, direct uh, action. So which uh, government put um, X amount on their basket and various uh, landowner uh, uh, put their auction price expression of interest, okay, I will provide uh, the carbon in, in X dollar per ton, and the government has their own uh, pricing, and if it is comes uh, below, the, below that uh, mark, and they will buy, if not, they won't buy. So, so that's, that's the current status. I think we have time for one or two more questions. If you All right, well, thank you, and uh, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much, uh, Himlal, Dr. Himlal Baral. Very good uh, talk today. Thank you. Thank you.